Welcome to another episode of Hardcat Basics. In this episode, we're going to focus on how to create a new task in the Hardcat Maintenance module. There are two ways to access the Hardcat Tasks functionality. The first method is via the Maintenance Roadmap screen, which is accessible via Modules, Maintenance, and selecting the Task option within this screen. This Hardcat Grid screen will show us all the tasks that are currently created within the Hardcat system. The second method to access the Hardcat Tasks lists is via any grid screen in Hardcat and change the area in the top left hand corner to the Tasks option. To create a new task on this grid screen, it's as simple as pressing the New button on the right hand side. With the new task screen open, we can now go through and populate the information within this task. Starting at the top option, we have the ability to set a priority. The default priority list out of the box is 0 through 9. This list can be modified to your own company's preferences using the Maintenance Options feature, or via the Hardcat Global Options. The next option we, we can set against the task is the description. The description will be inherited onto the work order as the work order description when the work order is created. In this instance, we'll create a new task called Air Conditioning 3 Month Service. The next option we can assign a task to is a project. The project functionality in the Hardcat allows us to group like style tasks together for consistent reporting and searching, or we need to create a work order regime where a sequencing is required. In this instance, we can create a new project and we can call it Air Conditioning Servicing. This way, if we have any other tasks associated to air conditioning, we can associate it to this project and later on we can do easy reporting out of the system to find work orders associated to air conditioning. By selecting the Engineer button, this brings up a list of all the people currently associated in the Hardcat system. From here, we can select a person for when the work order is generated, the work order will be associated to that person as the engineer. In this instance, Michael Peters will be our engineer. The next is Use Task Engineer. If that's unticked, that means the work order won't necessarily be associated to Michael Peters. We also have this functionality called regionalization with, within work orders, where work orders can be associated to an engineer based on a combination of assets location and maintenance class. The active tick box. This tick box, if unticked, means that no work orders will be generated against this task. The allow multiple work orders tick box allows for work orders to be generated against an asset irrespective if the prior work order has been closed. If that is unticked, means that a subsequent work order, even if it's overdue, will not be generated until the prior work order is closed. The next two check criteria areas are based around our date frequencies and or unit frequencies. So since this air conditioning service is a three monthly service, we're going to use the date check criteria and we're going to use the cycle frequency. To set our three monthly service, we're going to click Recurrence button. From here, we're going to select it months and every three months with a base date of the 10th of the 2nd, 2015. Other options we have for our date selections are on a regular date, on an actual day of a month, or a relative date where it can be a first, second, third, or fourth, or last day of a month based on a day of the week. Alternatively, if this work order was based around a unit base, if it was a car servicing, engine servicing, or if it was a, something around or other unit type servicing, we could click the unit servicing. From here we could select the type of unit that we need to set base our servicing off and then specify the units per cycle. If this was a 10,000 kilometer service for a car, we'd enter a unit cycle of 10,000. Every time an asset unit value iterates over 10,000, 10,001, 20,001, 30,001, a new work order will be generated. In this instance, we aren't going to tick it on. Right now, that is enough information to create a base task, but there is not enough information to actually generate work orders based off this task, as we need to add in either assets or maintenance classes for work orders to be generated automatically. To do that, we need to now click on the More Details button. By clicking on the More Details button, this is now taken us to the full task screen. From here, we can now go and add more details against our task. We can now add in a category. We can add a time that we'd like this work order to be generated for. We can add in a preset class. So when the work order is generated, we can ask up to an extra 999 questions against the work order. The questions could be based around outcomes of the work order, such as testing, pass fails, or inspection information. The details tab of the task allows us to double check and re-enter the information we entered previously around unit-based cycles or date-based cycles. Here we see the engineer that we had previously selected. We'll just go and assign an availability. What the availability allows us to do is specify what days of the week 
that that work order could be generated against. So if your organization's engineers do not work on the weekend, we can specify that this work order will only ever generate on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. The other thing we can do here as well is specify days unavailable. Your company may have picnic days, public holidays, or other days where work may not occur. So therefore, Hardcat will take that into account when working out the next service date for the asset. The next tab across is our Resources tab. The Resources tab allows us to enter in the estimated time that it would take to complete this service. This three monthly service may take two hours to complete. There is an estimated labor cost of roughly $356, and it takes one person to complete. With information saved against estimated resources, the Hardcat forecast functionality will take that information, and if you're scheduled adding one month, two month, three month, or four months ahead, or up to years ahead, Hardcat will tell you how long it will take to complete that particular task in man hours and cost. The other information we have in the resources tab are qualifications required. By entering in the license details or other qualifications required, this information is then presented on the printed work order. So when the work order is presented to the engineer, they'll see that, okay, to complete this, I have to have these tickets or these levels of licenses to complete this work order. The next tab is our notes tab. The notes tab contains two areas, safety notes and service notes. Safety notes, again, they print on the work order. So the safety notes could be such notes as must be wearing full PPE, area must be roped off. The service notes contain information such as what, what tasks should be taken to complete this service. If it was a three month service, we could select that and therefore that information will be then printed on a task. The next tab we have is files. The files tab allows us to import files to this task. That could be imported, could be things such as standards, photos, or anything else. There are options within the Hardcat maintenance module for these files to be copied across to every work order. The task can be easily accessed via the work order directly. The Parts tab. The Parts tab allows you to specify what parts are required to complete this service. The Parts tab links back into the product catalogue. By putting in your parts, that also then will populate the resources parts required estimates. When you're doing your forecasting, therefore you can then estimate as to how much cost in parts is going to be occurring in the next time period that you're selecting. The parts will also print on the Hardcat work order document. Tools. The tools required to say to complete the service, we need to make sure we have these tools available to us. So what we're trying to do here is arm your engineers and workforce with as much information as possible when they're going out to complete the work order. They will then have any excuse to say, oh, I can't do this because I didn't have the required tools or I didn't know about it because all that information will be presented to them in the work order that they are given. The next two tabs are assets and classes. These are the areas where we can associate either assets individually to a task or associate a maintenance class. If we were to associate a maintenance class, all assets that are associated to that maintenance class through their asset type relationship will automatically be associated to this task if their maintenance status is set to maintain or is currently maintaining. If the asset status is don't maintain, the asset will not be associated to this task. If we were to add in the biannual equipment checks maintenance class to this task, when we would go and generate work orders or complete forecasts, all assets associated with that class will be brought onto this task. The alternate way of adding assets to this task is just by directly adding the assets into the task by the asset list. There's two ways we can complete this, either by individually adding an asset in or using a search result where we can click on the search button, it will bring up the asset grid search screen, you can complete a search and then you can add the search results to this list. And that is your imperative as to how you would like to complete that. Once all these have been populated, that is enough information to save a task for it to be generated into work orders. Thank you for watching this episode of Hardcat Basics. If you have any other questions about anything you've seen in this episode, please don't hesitate to contact Hardcat Support.